Welcome to another episode of Fresh Freight Maintenance. This is a series that focuses on simple step-by-step -step processes that you can perform to conduct basic maintenance on your commercial vehicle. It can be performed anytime, anywhere. This episode is focused on navigating a full pre-trip inspection on a reefer trailer unit from start to finish. The reefer trailer unit inspection and all pre-trip inspections are an extremely important piece of ensuring that you're navigating the roadway safely with other drivers. We're gonna provide a step-by-step -step PDF along with the video on our website at freshfreight.com slash maintenance. Let's get to it. Starting with the reefer unit, we're gonna work our way clockwise around the trailer, going under, going inside, and going around for an all-encompassing pre-trip. Pro tip, always do your inspections the same way each time. When you get into a routine, you're much less likely to miss something as you navigate the pre-trip inspection. Other pro tips, always turn on your flashers and release your trailer brakes prior to starting the pre-trip. One, this allows you to check the functionality of your lights, as well as get some air flowing to the brakes to decide if there's any potentially dangerous air leaks under the carriage. First, the reefer unit. As you approach the unit, do a visual inspection of around the box before you open the doors. Check for any signs of leaking fluids or external damage that might be a telltale sign of internal damage. Opening the unit for inspection, to ensure safety, as always, safety first, make sure you turn the master switch off of the unit if it's not running and containing a load. So if it is running while you're doing your inspection, don't put your hands anywhere near the unit. While inside the unit, check for any frayed wires. Check for frayed electrical wires. Check your hoses for any cracks, tears, or leaks. Check your belts for any signs of abnormal wear or excessive free play. Make sure they're not cracked or torn anywhere. Inspect your fluid levels. Make sure that your, your oil is between the safe hashes on the dipstick. Make sure you also have proper coolant in the overflow tank. You're going to want to check the overflow tank to make sure that there's enough fluid in there to keep your unit cool while it's operating. An overflow tank on an X4 7500 is located at the top right of the unit. One of the most important items of doing a pre-trip on a commercial vehicle is to make sure that the annual DOT inspection is indeed up to date. You can see our sticker here. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the annual inspection was completed in the last 12 months, with this one actually being completed this month, September 2021, by myself, which we'll share with you how to do in another video. You'll generally find on a trailer unit, a reefer van, that this sticker for the annual inspection unit is on the bottom right corner on the front face of the trailer. Let's move into the inspection. One thing on reefer units that's important to be cognizant of is drain hoses. You have two drain hoses on the reefer unit itself, but you also have two drain hoses on each corner of the front of the reefer trailer. They're hard to spot. They're actually called kazoos, but you're gonna wanna make sure there's nothing obstructing those. Wooden pallets that the product is loaded on in these units it chips easily and it can get clogged in those hoses and you want to remove any debris that gets caught in there. Expecting the exterior of the trailer wall. You want to make sure that it's not bowing or damaged anywhere. You want to make sure there's not any missing rivets. If you have aerodynamic skirts, you want to make sure they're intact, not damaged or loose. Reverting back to our pro tip, we've already got our flashers on so we can see that our light is functioning on the side of the trailer. Check your dolly legs, make sure that everything's intact here and you're not missing anything. That handle is important, you want to be able to lower and raise those legs as needed. Check your fuel gauge, make sure there's plenty of fuel in there. You want to make sure you top that off as frequently as you can. You do not want that reefer unit turning off due to low fuel if you're equipped with the load. Those loads, as you know in the produce shipping industry, can get very expensive and we don't want to lose them or damage the product. Moving underneath the unit, you're going to want to inspect the undercarriage for any abnormal bowing or any bent frame pieces. Inspect your, expect your spare tire mount if you have one back there. We do not have one on this unit. Inspect your airlines. Try to get an eye on your fuel tank. Make sure all your hoses are intact and nothing is dangling too far down. Loose hoses can lead to an easy violation in a DOT inspection. You don't want to give them anything easily called out. Again, check all your hoses are properly mounted. We don't want to have any of these hanging more than uh, the DOT regulation off the ground. We don't want these hanging freely. They should all be mounted pretty well off the ground. We've released our air brakes, so we should be able to oddly hear any air leaks if there are any present. I don't hear anything. You're gonna to wanna to inspect your brakes for brake life. Make sure there's no signs of loose grease within the brakes, which could indicate a potential wheel sill leak. Wheel sill leaks can be a very nasty uh, maintenance item, and they do occur commonly. 
as you're under here, inspect the airbags, inspect the suspension, check your check your frame, check your shocks, and make sure there's no abnormal wear, tear, or any damage under here. Let's inspect the tires. Using the tire thumper, we're going to check the proper inflation. The tires shouldn't jump or be loose in any manner. These are some pretty sturdy tires, so we know there's, proper, there's plenty of air within them. Use your eyes to inspect the tread on each tire. I don't have a tread depth gauge, but the DOT regulations say that each tire needs to have a minimum of 2 30 seconds of an inch tread on each tire. We're safe here, that's plenty of tread. Inspect your lug nuts. If you have lug nut indicators, make sure they're all pointed in the same direction. Make sure they're tight, none's loose. If you don't have lug nut indicators, another way to see to know that you have a loose, a loose lug nut is to see metal on metal shavings. You'll see some shiny marks around each lug nut that's loose, indicating that uh, that lug nut is not securing that rim properly uh, to the other. Inspect your wheel hub. Check for proper grease within there. Check your wheel hub oil. Make sure that it is at the minimum mark. Add if necessary. As you can see, our oil is at the safe mark, so we're good on the wheel hub oil. And generally inspect for any, any abnormal dents in the rim, any bubbles in the tire, or any abnormal wear in the thread. These guys right here, mud flaps. They're DOT regulated, they're required to be going down the road, and they do act, actually add an extra layer of safety, ensuring that you don't chuck rocks at other passenger vehicles behind you, or other commercial vehicles for that matter. Make sure that your mud flaps are in place, properly mounted. It's very easy to lose these. It's something that happens commonly in a truck fleet. Get an eye on this every time that you're doing your pre-trip. Also, make sure that the crossbar member is not bent in any way, shape, or form, and make sure that it's properly spaced off the ground. You don't want them dragging too low. Otherwise, when you back up, you're gonna easily get it caught underneath your tire, and it's gonna rip the guy right off. Let's continue clockwise to the rear of the trailer. As you get behind the unit, check for a properly mounted license plate. That can be an easily overlooked item, and you don't wanna be missing it. Check your mud flaps again. Make sure your lights are operated properly. Make sure your flashers are on. If you're able to check your brake lights in a mirror or something, do so. Check all your hinges. Make sure all your hinges are secure. Make sure none of them are missing any bolts and there's no damage. These things can shear pretty easily at the hinge, uh, making your door unsafe to open. Check your, your door rod latches. Make sure that they are not bent, that they're in place, and it's secured. Check your weather stripping around the door. Make sure that nothing is torn or missing. You want to make sure that the inside of your trailer is sealed. Check your bump stops. Make sure that they're in place and they're not damaged. Those things, if somebody rocks that trailer real hard, they can shear that as well. Anything's damageable. Check your DOT bumper. Make sure that your DOT reflection tape is in place and make sure that the bumper isn't bent anywhere. Make sure your door also has door chain latches. These are for when you open your door to load or unload that you can swing the door around, latch it safely while you're moving the vehicle. Let's jump into the interior. Trailers are often loaded with forklifts, and it's, damage is not uncommon. If there's any holes that need repair, pull it out. Inspect the entire length of the wall. Get a visual of each spot. You can see that previously some damage has been patched to this trailer. Again, when the fork truck is in here moving around, they move around, they turn it just right. It's not hard to puncture the side of the wall. When you get to the front of the unit, make sure that your reefer bolt is secure. You don't want this thing loose or potentially falling off to a point where as the trailer is being loaded, a fork truck might come in here and damage the, the uh, reefer unit itself. And check your loading items. This is a bulkhead. You want to make sure it's not torn. No damage apparent there. It looks like a good bulkhead. As you get to the head of the trailer, keep an eye out for debris. This is literally a wood chip from a pallet that snapped and caught itself up there. That's a big piece to find. Debris, especially pallets chipped. Wood, wood pallets that chip, that's a big piece. As we checked the hose drain earlier, we saw some wood chip pallet debris fall out of there. It's a big item. It's something to be cognizant of as you're doing your pre-trip. Check the air chute for the reefer. The reefer unit utilizes this air chute to direct the outflow of air to ensure proper circulation throughout the entire unit. The chute should be riveted at each section. You'll be able to look up and make sure that each section is in place. As you can see, the rivets throughout this entire unit look good. 
Again, as you're walking through, checking your chute, also check the other side of the wall. Overall, the entire of this unit looks clean and ready to roll. Another important piece for refrigerated freight is your load locks. You want to make sure that your load locks are in good shape. Make sure they're not bent and make sure they still ration pretty strongly. You can find these at any national truck stop. They generally have these for sale within. The circulation of the trailer goes from the reefer unit through the chute to the back of the trailer, underneath to the floor rivets, and all the way back to the return side of the reefer unit. You want to make sure that your floor is free to breathe. As you can see, this isn't the cleanest unit. We're going to get this sweeped out and washed out before we get loaded. But always make sure that your reefer unit, typically a reefer unit is hauling food products, at least at fresh break, that's all we do, that's our niche. So when we prepare a trailer during a pre-trip, we got to make sure it's clean, make sure it's free to breathe, and make sure it's been washed out. So when we do load it with that food product that's going to the table, to the local grocery market, it's ready to be loaded and it's going to be in a safe shipping environment. So on a refrigerated unit, or really any unit that, that ships any kind of food grade product, it needs to be sealed after it leaves the shipper. This is typically what a seal will look like. It's typically a wire seal with a number on it that's documented on your bill of lading paperwork. So the next person down the line receiving the goods can make sure that this seal hasn't been broken since the point in time I left the shipper. If it has been, it's possible that the products inside could be contaminated. At Fresh Freight, when we wash our trailers, before we go to a shipper the first time, we padlock all our units to ensure that nobody but our team can get inside. As you exit the vehicle, continue clockwise around the trailer doing the same exterior pre-trip inspection on the passenger side of the trailer. So that's it, that's the reefer pre-trip inspection. Wrapping up, this is a big piece for all the professional drivers out there. Please make sure you're doing your pre-trip thoroughly each and every time you're supposed to be doing it. You should always clock at least a 15 minute pre-trip on your ELD, ensuring that you're doing a safe and thorough pre-trip. Your family's on the road, my family's on the road. We don't want that unit to fall apart going down the road and potentially do some damage to another person, another vehicle. Do a proper pre-trip each and every time. So, with that, you've completed your pre-trip, and if you've done it successfully, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna take your arm, you're gonna wanna put it out, you're gonna wanna lift it over, put it behind your back, and go back and forth. Pat yourself on the back, because you did a great job, and you're awesome. Thanks.